Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for joining us for World Kitchen Tajikistan. Um, I'm not sure where you're joining us from or if you're cooking along with us, but if you are, please be sure to let us know. And if we're going too fast, we can slow down for you. Um, my guest chef today is from Tajikistan and we've been chatting all morning about um, her background and she can give you a little bit more information about that and, and her family history and how she's actually kind of got an ancestry from several uh, countries in the region. But I'll just go ahead and I will introduce her with um, just a simple name and she can tell you her full name because I don't want to take a chance on messing that up. So uh, Moda, come on over. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Tom Robbins again. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. That's a great you want to say your whole name for them? Yeah, sure. As you said, Moda is that's how, for example, my brothers would call me. This is how like some of my friends would call me. Uh, and this is the name that I kind of um, people prefer me to share when, for example, in the States, it was much easier for people to remember me by that name. But my full name, my first name is Moda Vlad, and my last name is Rolon Kodirova. So yeah, I even have a middle name. So the, if the whole thing is more Davlat, Mama de Brolimovna, Rolon Kodirova. So you see why I didn't try that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So we'll talk a little bit more about your family, your background, history. But the dish that we're going to work on today does take some time. So because of that, we actually have kind of done our magic of television thing. And we have a dish um, that we've worked on this morning that's um, on the stove already uh, cooking for you and we will go through all the steps and prepare a second batch of it for you that will then have to cook longer when we're done. So if you're cooking along with us, like I said, please let us know. We'll try to, um, you know, adjust our timing to, to fit you if you're, um, you know, taking a little more time to do things. But as as typically we do, um, Moda has gone ahead and, and, and chopped some of the vegetables and things um, so that it's not going to take quite as much time as we're going through this. So this dish is mm -hmm. called? It's called uh, pilav, or uh, it also goes by so many other different names. For example, it's called uh, pilau, pilav, plov, uh, some call it uh, osh, for example, in Tajikistan, it's even called Arsh. Uh, so, uh, but the general the general concept is basically it's a it's a it's a dish made out of rice, rice and beef. It, they can even make it uh, with lamb uh, or chicken if you want to. Uh, so it's basic, and there's there are carrots also, so sort of like the third main ingredient of, of this dish, and uh, onions and garlic, and we have some um, some spices like uh, there. And um, the the recipe varies from 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 different regions, just in Tajikistan, like from region to region, it varies a lot. And it's sign it's it's a very common dish in Central Asia, in the whole Central Asia, like in Uzbekistan, that they make a lot of them, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and uh, there are just dozens dozens of recipes of plov. So I would what I wouldn't go into make today. Uh, is sort of my signature uh, recipe, sort of the way that I like to make it and the way that my little son, two years old, Amir, loves to eat it. So, right. Yeah. So you're here because your husband is here with the Hubert H. Humphrey program, the fellowship right. program. Right. We've right. had several chefs over the last few months with the right. Humphrey program. So our regular guests are kind of um, familiar with what that program is. But you came here um, early fall, late summer? Yeah, I came in September. We came in mid-September, me together with, with my son, Amir, and uh, my husband, Ali Yor, who is uh, in the program with Hugo Humphrey. He came in August, so we joined him in, in, in a month after that. So mm -hmm. we've been here for, for about six, six months. Yeah, yeah, and you've got a, a couple more months left? Yeah, we have. We would be here till mid of June. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yes. Yes. Great. But this wasn't your first um, experience being in other countries. I mean, you studied in the UK, right? Yeah. Right. It's it's my first time to be in the in the United States. But I did my I had my um, my masters in UK in London, London School of Economics. I studied management there, and uh, I did another postgraduate program there as well. So I was I was there studying for uh, for three years. Okay. Right. And I've been around uh, living outside of, of Tajikistan quite a okay. few times. Yeah. Great. Well, let's get started and we'll, right. we'll talk as we're, as we're going along yes. with the recipe. 
So yep. first thing, we're going to start with the meat, right? Right. So we get the meat uh, chopped into, like it, 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 it very much depends. For example, some recipes would just keep the meat uh, like in, in a much um, bigger, bigger size, or they just chop it to like into this kind of sauce. So it depends. It's, so it's like a stew meat or yeah. this, this actually, I got like an eye of round roast and we chopped but that up. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. You can even, like, as I said, you can make it with chicken or lamb, like lamb. Uh, it depends on region to region, of course, but mm -hmm. like uh, it, it's, it's made. And it doesn't necessarily uh, matter like what, what part of it is. The meat you want there, as long as there's a meat. Yeah. <laughs> they even make it with other meat. Okay. And that kind of recipe is called that. Uh, it's called bold palau. Like if it like it kal palau, uh -huh. it's basically means if you translate it to English, it's like bold. <laughs> like it doesn't have <laughs> Okay. So yeah, if if you salad serve it vegetarian. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> all right. So let's start. Yeah. So we we add mm -hmm. olive oil. So what happens like traditionally? It's a, it's a very heavy, heavy dish and they do add a lot of oil into it. So there is one recipe which says like it goes in the ratio of one to one. For example, if you cook one kilo of rice, you add one liter of, of oil. Wow, that's <laughs> and, a lot uh, of oil. Yeah, that is a lot of oil. But I tend to keep it a little less than the oil because I, I don't want it to be like super heavy. Right. Right, and they do add fat into the oil to keep it like even heavier, which I don't do. Right. So I kind of like, yeah, as I said, you know, it's sort of my my own uh, recipe that I have that I feel comfortable making and I feel comfortable eating. So. Right. And when we were making the first yeah. batch that's uh, currently cooking, you were telling me that some people um, tend to do more or less carrot, um, you know, depending on their personal preference. Exactly, yeah. So this recipe, there isn't a set recipe, just like with any dish, but the carrot is the main, is one of the main ingredients in the pilaw. So you cannot have pilaw without the, uh, without the, the carrots. Mm -hmm. But again, that's a, that's a matter of taste. If you want more fat, you know, like, like traditionally in Tajikistan, like to make and eat it with a lot of carrots. But again, I mean, you can choose, you can make it with just two, 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 two carrots you can make even add a lot more than you know just whatever you feel comfortable with sure yeah okay so we, we do add the the oil and then we we add the meat beef uh, that goes into the and uh, talking about the oil like um it's in tajikistan for example they use cotton oil mm. yeah have you heard of that? No, so, yeah. cotton oil. They take the oil out of cotton. Basically. No, yeah. I've never. There are big cotton it. fields in Uzbekistan as well, actually. Right. Yeah. So they do. They do take the. It's. It's. It gets a very specific taste. Like you need to try it with that kind of oil. So, but they do. It's quite. It's quite. Yeah. It's quite widespread to make it with that kind of oil. But for me, going for bread for. <laughs> For olive oil is kind of mild preference. You mm -hmm. can make it with, uh, with that, or you can make it with sunflower oil if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make a mixture of uh, there's an oil called zahir. It's linen oil, like linen. Le wow, yeah. so similar to the cotton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they make it with that as well. Wow, which okay. I love. I love. I really love it with with the linen oil. Okay. Okay. I think this is how much we might go here. Okay. Again, yeah. That's that's very much. Um, you can choose to add less meat or more. I personally, I don't measure when I make follow, but people do measure it a lot. You can go by the grams, like how much gram of meat. Yeah. So, you know, they, they're keeping it very, um, they're keeping it very uh, consistent. They're keeping it very, uh, uh, they want to make sure like everything goes, doesn't exceed uh, the amount that you put. But I personally, again, is my signature, I would just add whatever I feel comfortable. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So one of our guests said maybe you're uh, mentioning something that we ha know here as cotton seed oil. Cotton so, seed. Cotton seed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I need. I need to. I, I probably need to to check it out. Okay. Myself because what I know is the cotton oil. I don't okay. know what the process of making and how do they exactly they make it. Right. I probably need to look it up because now I'm curious. Like <laughs> okay. I, I was never like even yeah thinking about it. how do they even take that oil. Right. <laughs> I don't know, maybe seeds, okay. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're also going to put onion yeah. in here. Yeah. yeah, let's put onion. Uh, let's just, I'll just quickly chop the onion. So, uh, 
whatever the recipe is, uh, there is never, there's always onion there, but it's never like too much. Okay. I, I choose to go with one. For example, if I'm making that amount of uh, pilaf, is I would go with one, one onion. Okay. Yeah. So this is maybe a little over a pound, maybe a pound of meat, um, half a kilo or something like. Yeah, and one onion. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to just take it that way. And you, the reason to make it with directly with the meat because it would somehow give the, the meat a little bit more juicy, like. Mm -hmm. with, um, and now we would add um, salt. Okay. Uh, and you can be generous with salt at this stage because when the broth, when we add the water, it needs to be a little bit more salty because the rice will absorb a lot of, a lot of uh, the, uh, the salt. So, and we add cumin. Uh, again, talking about the, uh, the spices, it's like people would just add uh, salt and cumin, right? Mm -hmm. They would use a whole grain of cumin, but what okay. I like to I also like to add uh, paprika, like many wouldn't add, but um, again, that's a matter of taste. So you know, if you don't like it, you can just not add it. Sure. Yeah. But I so, like it. So salt, pepper, uh, paprika, and uh, we say cumin, but cumin. Yeah, yeah. cumin. cumin. Yeah. And um, red and the black pepper. Black pepper, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, we will just mix that a bit and uh, we will mix that all together. Mm -hmm. Again, if you see that we have like moderate amount of oil there, but like you might see with a lot more oil when, uh, when for example, <laughs> some people might cook it in our place. So. Right. Yeah, um, we were talking about this a little bit, you know, the, the way recipes evolve over right. time right. And, and, you know, I find with Persian recipes, it's the same thing, you know, whereas in the my mother-in-law's time, right. you know, women were traditionally home all day uh -huh. and they could spend all day cooking and preparing and, right. you know, chopping right. and doing all the things. But, you know, nowadays a lot of women work outside the home, so mm -hmm. it has to be something that can be done pretty quickly. Exactly. when they get home from work or yeah. prepare, prepare it ahead of time and put in a slow cooker or yeah. something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Absolutely right. Like uh, you can, for example, it's traditionally the good pilau is made outside on fire on this oh, pot right. uh, that goes on fire. But you can make it certainly inside the, the, you know, inside your kitchen on the stove. So, but people like even I myself, like you get this instant pot mm -hmm. that you can just place all the ingredients inside and then there's also a regime that you can just press it has the pulp regime again it varies probably so your instant pot literally says yeah claw it says on it. Claw. <laughs> like the one that i have i don't believe because they somehow adjust it to, to region to region right but in our region you can buy an instant pot which has a regime which says claw. okay so i would just i've and i've done that too, many times like if i'm super lazy you know i just add all the ingredients Add the water, add the rice, and then just press for a plow fuji, and then it cooks it, you know, somehow. That's great. <laughs> Magic, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, as you said, and then again, uh, people can would adjust it again from season to season, region to region, what's available there. For example, some might not have available raisins, for example, mm -hmm. right? Some might have. So, uh, a lot of changes has happened to, to plow again. It's, there are dozens, dozens of, as I said, recipes of plov, so um, in Tajikistan or Uzbekistan, but plov is a very big thing in these two countries for sure, mm -hmm. because there's almost like a cult of plov, because <laughs> people are just getting, uh, it's it's a very, it's a main dish, like they make for for weddings, they make for just any any occasion they might have, mm -hmm. people would just go for plov, so right. yes. And, and again, we were talking about the fact that like carrots is something that you know, you can always have, they, they are hearty vegetable yes. that can keep over the winter. So you yeah. will always have these available in your storage or, right. or whatever. That makes, yeah, that makes, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, talking about our region, we know that carrots is something you can grow even yourself in your small garden and something that you can keep over, you know, during the winter. Mm -hmm. And then you might just have it available, as you said, carrots, onions are more or less, uh, you know, you can store them and mm -hmm. then keep them and then uh, rice, of course, you can get rice and oil and then, and then make it, um, you know, whenever you feel like sure. doing that. Okay, so we're going to show them how you chop the carrots, right? right. Yeah, let's just, uh, we have these ones right here. 
as many carrots as you want. You can go with one or two or three or five or yeah. uh, <laughs> again, depending on your taste. Right. So yeah, this is for example how I would make it. Like, I, I could probably talk a little bit about how cloth even like there's a legend how cloth was first created. Okay. So I don't know, like so I don't know about validity, so that's why it's called a legend. Yeah. If it happened or not. So uh, basically there once lived a king who called his cook and said, I need this dish uh, food that you should think of that my soldiers would eat and then they would want to eat anything for about 24 hours. Oh. So he came with these recipes like, oh, I made up this food that your soldiers can eat and then they'll be full. <laughs> You're right. For about 24 hours. So, so that's why you think it's such a heavy dish. I, with the meat, I don't know. The oil, yeah. the rice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would. This somehow justifies the the uh, the happiness of this. Right. Recipe. Yeah. Now this recipe also has quite a bit of garlic involved. It right? does. It yeah. Does. It and does. again, garlic is one of those things you can grow so, and keep it over winter. Um, yeah, you that know, makes space. a lot of sense. Yeah. Like we we would like those ingredients that we have here is something that any family can have basically in, in their in their house in their fridge in their storage uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of other dish that would in our country would be made uh, that would involve they would certainly have carrot in it mm -hmm. and certainly have uh, onion mm -hmm. like a lot of that is mm -hmm. and uh, and so you can tell like and meat as well i mean people have been um, herding animals mm -hmm. those on them they would might have you know Carrot meat there all the time as well. Yeah, so. So I noticed that when you're cutting the, the carrots, they're not quite as thin as the matchstick carrots, but they're, they're I think that keeps them a little firmer when you yep. want to serve the dish. If yeah, they were too thin, thin, they would get mushy, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. So, and even when you put the, the carrots in the, in the meat, and I add a little bit of water, you know, to, to cook it. So this is why you keep the heat very low so that it doesn't get mashed again. If you cook it in a very high uh, uh, temperature, then it might just get mashed. So the idea is to have it uh, kind of cooked, but very much like, uh, you know, still so holding yeah. its shape. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, we also need, so here's the rice. We also like right before you put the meat, in the, in the you, you wash the rice and then uh, uh, re soak it um, in, add a little bit of um, salt mm. so that it keeps the rice um, like it absorbs a little bit of water and then mm -hmm. we just need less water when cooking it and less time of course when cooking okay it. yeah so we're gonna so soak the rice a bit yes yeah, soak the rice this is also really common in in a lot of the, the traditional recipes we've had over time, you know, where right. uh, cultures will yeah. soak their rice or yeah. at least wash it several times, rinse yeah. it several, several times. times. Exactly. Yeah, we also <coughs> wash it about like 10 times so that until the water gets clean. Right. You know, so those small hacks, as you said, you know, you can just have them away. But it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if, I mean, I think, I think what we're told is that you're kind of rinsing some of the starch off of the rice. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's true, I don't know, yeah, but it, it is <laughs> tradition. We just add a little bit of salt, okay. so that we keep it uh, salt. Okay. Right. You said that you think some of the things that were added later to this dish might be like the the raisins and the chickpeas, mm -hmm. because those might not have been traditional dishes a yeah. hundred years ago or two hundred exactly, years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not as some people would just keep it very plain, not add any raisins or any uh, any 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 uh, chickpeas, and to keep it or not even garlic, like to keep wow. it very authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how it's probably how it all started. You know, it probably might have been a lot more uh, simple than it used to be, but now it gets like even people add um, uh, uh, they would add. Uh, the eggs, they call the quail, yeah? What quail eggs. The, yeah, yeah, the quail eggs. On a serve it with that. So, you okay. know, it's just like people experiment. Yeah, little little additions. Yeah, 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 sure. So they do them out and to be exactly. Okay. I will 
just a little bit. And it does get, you know, the way you cook it and the way that you sim it is uh, it comes in layers, right? So uh, you would put that, for example, underneath would go the meat mm -hmm. and that would go the carrots and then um, uh, and then the rice, of course, and this is how you sim it, like you leave it for 40 to 45 minutes mm -hmm. and then it, it gets like finished. Uh, so, and then you serve it in that way as well. Like you would first put the rice and then the carrots would go on top of that and then the meat. Okay. And there is a, there's also a legend about that as well. Like how did that happen? So okay. basically maybe the same king or different king. So he, he said he always wanted his cloth to be fresh, like just cooked, just out of the pot. And but his cook would always cheat and he would just make it beforehand <laughs> and then just warm it up for him and okay. everything wants to eat. But the king didn't like it. So he, he, he came up with something very smart. So he said, I want my cloth not to be mixed, you know, when you serve it to me. I want it to come in layers. I want first the rice and then the carrot and then the uh, and then the um, the meat. So that I don't want the ingredients to be mixed when you serve it to me. So in that way, the cook could not cheat. He, could not <laughs> he had to make some, it fresh yeah, every time. So every time he had to make yeah. it fresh so that he would be able to serve it in layers the way that the king loves it. So Very smart I don't king, know like, yeah. so <laughs> how much of that is true, but this mm -hmm. is uh, so it does but people do mix it like there's a recipe that people would just mix it like they would they would uh, when it's cooked they mix it and then they serve it so mm -hmm. all the carrot all the all the meat and the rice would just get mixed mm -hmm. when, and then they serve it i prefer to 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 serve it in layers but i don't i don't really mind i don't okay. think really think about it sure yeah all right so um, another thing that it, it, so we we have a little time before we have to put the carrots in. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, just like about two three more minutes, and okay. then we'll just put the okay. carrots in. Okay. So maybe what we could do is talk a little bit about the side dish that we um, we didn't include in the recipes, but we talked about the fact that this is something that would normally go with right. the dish. Yeah. So if you want to tell me a little bit about that, we could start cutting the tomato yeah. and onion. So uh, what happens is that this rice. It gets served with something like a side salad, mm -hmm. like a salad. So this salad also varies. The recipe for the salad that is called shakarov. It's also varies. Like some people would add uh, tomato and uh, cucumbers, mm -hmm. and then um, onion. Mm -hmm. uh, but some would just add the tomatoes and the and the onion. So what we do today is just add the tomato and the onion, mm -hmm. and then uh, a little bit of olive oil and the, the salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay, yeah. Uh, so we can, so again, uh, there's nothing, not a specific requirement, but the way I, so kind of, I, I like it to be uh, cut, and the way I've seen a lot of that, that people mm -hmm. would do, is to, is to cut it this way. So you're taking the core yeah, yeah, just to, Save us some time, probably. Uh, so, like this. Okay. Right? So slices, slices, yeah. Like, as thin as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how, why did they call shakarov uh, because shakarov is uh, shakarov is basically the definition of this word. Is shakar is uh, uh, sugar oh. and ob is uh, water. Water, sugar. Yeah. Water. So I, yeah. I don't know, like why. <laughs> Why it's this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyways, yeah. Again, this this kind of salad might not just be there, you know, when when because pilaf has a it, you know it dates back to centuries, centuries back when mm -hmm. it was first uh, basically created. So I do assume that uh, there were no tomatoes available yeah. in the region at that time. Right. But so this you know, is another something, more recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it does yeah. you get I'll, I'll just add the uh I'll add the the carrot. The carrots. Yeah. And I just add the carrots and stir them with fry them with the meat a little bit. And now we can add water to uh, drop the <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I also do, so we will add one big garlic that go there. Okay. But I also like to add um, um, some garlic, garlic at this clove. point as well. Yeah. yeah. So we're just, just using a garlic masher yeah. to uh, kind of 
Get that all out. All right. It's about two cloves of garlic yeah, there. Yeah. Again, matter of taste. You can add more. You can just prefer not to add at all. It's just the way I um, like to do that. Mm, yeah, so I'll add a little bit more salt at this stage as well. Okay. Um, so that the carrot also gets the flavors and we add a little bit more paprika. Okay. And then, Because at that stage it was more for the meat, mm -hmm. while at this side it's more for the, for the carrots. Okay, so we'll mix that. Um, okay, one of our uh, regular viewers says Sorry. he's actually cooking this in the Instant Pot today. Yeah. So he's wondering how long in the instant pot for the simmering after adding the rice. Like um, we would once they just to make sure that the water absorb gets absorbed, and then in the simmering we would it would give, go from forty to forty five minutes on the just, stove top. So in the yeah. instant pot, probably a lot less though, right? Yeah, as I said, you know we have the I've. I've as I said, you know, we would have it's the just regime. a button. Yeah, yeah, it's just a button. It's just it a says "plov," and then you would you press that button. Right. So, but I, yeah, it, since it's 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 much faster. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. cooks a lot more faster than yeah. You you're making good point. I don't know if it it's forty five minutes on yeah, the stove. Yeah, on the stove. I don't know. Maybe yeah. not even ten minutes in the yeah ten to fifteen probably. Yeah. 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 Or you can always check the rice. If it's if the rice, you can see that the rice needs probably a, a little. Oh, of, you know, you can leave it a little, little bit more there mm -hmm. so that it's not really hard, so that it's and it's not sticky. It, like you can say that the, the rice is cooked. You can always check that. I mean, mm -hmm. there isn't a certain. Uh, sure. Color. Okay. So yeah. we've got the, let's see, we've got the carrots. Let's, let's yeah. show the pot, Alex. A bit. So uh, we did add the meat, just to remind, and then we added the. the Onions. Mm -hmm. So we stir that for a little while, we fry that, and then we add the, the, the carrots. Carrot. We added salt, cumin, uh, black pepper, and uh, red paprika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're mixing that a little bit more, and then we can add water to it if we, we, we want. Mm -hmm. We can fry it a little bit more. We can add, like, uh, at this stage as well. Mm -hmm. Again, oops. Uh, again, with the water, like, um, some people would just measure it like so much for example if there's one cup of uh, one cup of uh, rice then they would add two cups of uh, water mm -hmm. you know that's how the ratio would go like but for me it, like again i wouldn't really measure it i would just go by i don't know by the instinct so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i would just uh, you know the way i feel like but as it, it, it has to cover the the it has to cover the uh, the carrots and the meat at this stage okay. and then uh, cover the rice when we add the rice so it needs to cover the rice so that the, the rice does get uh does get boil and right. then uh, so you so want some more water then? yes okay so just, uh, yeah. is this also the stage where we add the chickpeas yes we will okay. add the chickpeas at this stage uh, the raisins will add um, a little because we don't want them to be like very cooked. Mm -hmm. That's why we would add them a little bit when we add the rice. I like to add them when we add the rice. Okay. So you can even put them before you, uh, you know, see it. Like it's okay. Just or you can add before you're yeah, adding the rice okay. as well, but not really at this stage because this might just get them too uh, too cooked. Okay. Yeah, so this water needs to get boiled. Yeah, this is how the meat should be really on the bottom. Turn this one up a bit. So that, yeah, yeah. And it does taste, you know, when I was talking about like how people would make it on fireplace outside, mm -hmm. 
uh, with the pot again, mm -hmm. uh, like how the taste does vary. Like when you have it uh, made on the fire, it does get a completely oh, yeah. like different taste right. to itself. Like even though you would say, oh, rice on fire, like how much would that change, you know, in the taste, but it does change. It does change a lot in the, in the taste somehow, you know, you get the, I don't know, a little bit of barbecue smell. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think you know, you, anytime get, you're cooking outside yeah. over a fire, I yeah. mean, I think, you know, those of us who did like scouting or camping as kids, yeah. you know, you have that, there's, there's something about it that just it tastes is, different. It, it does yeah. taste completely um, different. One of our guests was asking about the chickpeas. Those are canned chickpeas. Yeah, those are canned chick yeah. chickpeas, but like you can even have those, uh, the one, the, the fur ones, mm -hmm. and then soak them. For example, people would soak them overnight. If they're going to make it the next day, mm -hmm. like you can soak them, or you can boil them a little bit if you want them a little like, um, uh, you know, softer to go in your pilaf. Again, like some people don't add them at all. Like some people add them. It's a matter of like taste again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like to add them. I, I do like to have them, but not too much. Like I want to have like here and there, you know, mm -hmm. bump into chickpeas in the pot. Right. But not like too much of it because it somehow, some people say it absorbs the taste of it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, um, it's a, we can, we can always choose. I'm trying to remember for this one that we're going to show later. Did we add the raisins already? Or yeah, we did? I did. Okay, we I did, did okay. before I sing it. Like, okay. So sort of uh, you, collect, you make a hole in, in, in the middle, okay. you add the raisins, and then you cover it with the rice. Okay. So that the raisins does get I see. Get or okay. you can add it before adding the rice. Okay. You know, into the bar, like here, you can okay. add it, and then you put the rice. This is, this is another way of doing it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the big head of garlic that you saw yeah, on, big, the, on the yeah. photo. Yeah, yeah, big head of garlic that goes in the, uh, I think I'll just remove. Um, oh, you want that bigger? Uh, just yeah. a little bit. You, you can choose not to do that at all because it's somehow, I'll just remove this part a little bit. So what happens is that people would just add it before they sing the rice. Okay. But I like to put it in there together with the carrots and stuff so that it, oh, it absorbs okay. the, the taste uh -huh. and then it does get cooked uh, pretty well right. when you serve it because when you just put it before you sort of... So, so what you were trying to do was take that, that yeah. woody stem part yeah. off mostly and but, then the, the out, outer layer of the paper. Right. Yeah, the, the outer layer, I was I was taking it off. Yeah, but again, some people don't remove it at all. They okay. just put it like this, so okay. it goes there. And this is later on when you serve it, it goes in the middle on top of the rice. It's it, it kind of it does taste good, but it's kind of more in the decoration. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, sure. Yeah, it does good. So, so it's I very do, traditional. It is. It yeah. is that people do add it. So I like to add it in here. I say like the whole garlic would go there. Uh, yeah, so the whole garlic would, I like to, to go, you see, in the, in the water so that it absorbs the taste as well as give like, give some mm -hmm. of the, the garlic taste so that when you serve it, when you eat it, it's like very well done and then it, it, I like it that way. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, so as you as you mentioned in the beginning that it takes a, a long time to make this dish mm -hmm. uh, but we uh, you know what for example the meat uh, people would cook it for two hours for one hour mm -hmm. you know so that it's very well done and then all the taste so that the pilaw would the taste very meat you know it has this taste yeah, of meat in sure. it and then when they put the carrots for example they reduce the the, the amount of the heat and then keep it for another cook it for another four to five minutes in very low heat again it absorbs slowly cooks slopes the uh, absorbs the the the, the taste and mm -hmm. the, and then when you so that takes a lot of amount of time so mm -hmm. we won't be able to do it but we do right. make people i mean this is what normal they would they wouldn't go for this long period of time of making it but if you make it in a longer time, then it does taste a little bit different. Different, a yeah. little, little more yeah. melded yeah, together, the flavors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, You do get the flavors out a lot if you're mm -hmm. going to cook it slower and then for a longer period of time. Right. But then not everyone would do that because you wouldn't. You don't have yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, you don't have the time. And it's right. normal. I mean, it, we you know, uh, uh, like I would make that kind of vlog like occasionally. Yeah, right. sometimes but i would make plov because my son he loves plov a lot so i make sure to make him plov like every week like once per week mm -hmm. for sure because he loves yeah. it so yeah 
I do make a lot of that, but not all the time with those long time cookies. Okay, all yeah. right. So this is gonna cook this way for a bit. For a little bit, yeah. yeah. We can reduce a little bit, but more so that you know the carrots don't get when they well done, so that so that they don't just mash in. Yeah, yeah, sure. You want them yet? Yeah, okay. Them. Well, let's. Um, you want to go back and finish the salad? Yeah. yeah. Let us let's finish the salad that. quickly. Okay. And then uh, I'll just go back to this. Well, okay. what is doing that? Um, we did forget to thank our sponsor earlier today, so I want to definitely thank Outreach and Online Education's Office of Inclusion, Equity, and Diversity for sponsoring World Kitchen, as always. Okay, so we're slicing that onion also very thin, mm -hmm. in kind of the rainbow shape there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Cindy says that when she's in a rush with dishes like this, she'll sometimes add some like beef paste or beef bouillon to the broth to kind of give it a richer yeah, flavor yeah, so that's yeah, a good absolutely. idea that's a very good idea in fact like you can uh you can have it beforehand you know mm -hmm. we, people might just have it right all the time sure. in the freezer or something. yeah you know and then if you add it uh, that would just uh, that would just even add to the to the flavor a lot more like it's not going to do any harm it would right. actually just make it just much much more taste. sure yeah. um and then peggy's asking when you've got the the carrots in the pot already like we just did and the uh -huh. and the garlic right. would you would you leave it open or would you cover it traditionally i would leave it open leave it open yeah and this is how i've i've never seen it people cover, cover it, it. Yeah, okay even like for example they would make it in a very in a huge pots during the Out wedding on the, stuff, on on the, the fire on yeah the fire. like right. they're huge pots like you can save serve basically with one pot you save about uh, uh you save i don't know 200 people wow <laughs> yeah, like yeah really big pot yeah, yeah yeah they are big pots yeah so people would uh yeah this onion is getting into my getting in your <laughs> eyes yeah, yeah. <laughs> people don't want to see me you know crying <laughs> they like oh. <laughs> what happened to her Okay, so this is the second, uh, the second um, tomato. Tomato, yeah. yeah. I cut the first one, and this one is the second one. Okay. Yeah, and as I said, people would add uh, cucumber to it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can keep it just, just like that, just tomatoes and onions. Or if you don't want, you can just not add onions at all. Mm -hmm. you know, it just, uh, it goes much better with the. With some side salad, you know, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then people would, uh, like, people in Tajikistan in general and Central Asia would drink a lot of green tea. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so oh. when you have cloth, since it's heavy, for some reason they drink it with, uh, like, the, uh, the green tea. Yeah, green tea. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, kind of also a must with it. Like, mm -hmm. you just have it. I don't know what, okay. again, the science behind it, but. Yeah, and so then this goes with, um, you said, olive oil yeah we can add a little bit pepper. again it's a matter of taste you can you can choose not to add olive oil but i i prefer to have it with just not add it Again, you know, some people from Central Asia, if they watch, they're like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what we make. And this is why people would actually get into arguments because I am also in some groups and Facebook, like on social media and those cloth groups. If someone shares a recipe of making a cloth and some people would just get into fighting, you know, they get into argument. It's like, this is this not how we make. Yeah. And then it would make sense for them because they would come from a specific region that they're, mm -hmm. not, they're not used to making it that way. But then, you know, people would just, <laughs> just right. fight over it. Yeah. And then we mix it. Okay. So oh, that, sorry. Yeah. No, there we go. Okay. Fork or spoon or whatever. Yeah. Just two forks. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we mix that. Um, so really simple, just onion, yeah, tomato, just, yeah, yeah. little oil, salt and pepper. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, that's done. Okay, yep. so the raisins and the rice we still need to figure yes, out. Yes, we yeah. need, uh, I'll just check on this, like what's, what's going on here. We want the, the carrot as well as, again, you can keep it for a much longer time to get all the flavors like again on a very slow heat mm -hmm. but you can make it that way as well like so there isn't like a strict rule to how how to make it so you can it's a little bit flexible mm -hmm. 
so yeah we what we can do now is we can add the rice okay and then it does get uh, so again we read that when we added the salt into the rice uh, we just make sure to rinse it a few more times as well so that the the, the salt goes away and then okay you know, so, that we keep so you're rinsing right. again yeah. before we you rinse, put it in yeah we rinse it again so that the salt goes away so again uh, uh like it's a matter of choice if you want to raise it or not, but just you would have to add a little bit more water in that in the cooking process if you're not going to rinse it. Uh -huh. Because the rinsing and the soaking yeah. softens the it rice softens already. The rice and it, it does absorb a lot of water mm -hmm. in this stage already. As you can see, you know, our rice is, is changing in its size mm -hmm. because of the water. Pressure. Yeah, I'm always amazed at how much rice grows, especially the basmati rice that is right. the long grain, you know. Yeah. You, you think you're only using a cup, it's not going to be it's much, not. but it ends up being yeah. so much more. Yeah, and talking of rice, uh, like basmati is not really used in the region, mm. but it's something uh, you can always have an alternative to the local, to the local, uh, to the local uh, rice. So mm -hmm. we do have those sorts of rice that are grown locally, mm -hmm. like just for example, you would have them all in Tajikistan, you would have them in Uzbekistan, for example, mm -hmm. like they go by different names, they do have different shapes, they do have different size, they do have different, uh, you know, even flavors, mm -hmm. they end up being, and, and depending, like some, some, some rice absorbs a lot of water, some doesn't require right. a lot of water, and depending on the sort of the rice, you just, your whole recipe, you know, adding, particularly the water part of it, you know, changes so much because, you know, some, mm -hmm. it just, uh, you know, but here I, I choose, I prefer to make it with uh, with um, basmati, basmati is, is quite good, like it mm -hmm. does taste good, I personally prefer it, but again, if you're in the region, there are just so many different uh, sorts of rice, uh, people would not make it with basmati. So you're kind of just dropping it on top of this mixture, yes, you're not really top. mixing it in at all. No, we're not mixing it just in. Just yeah. dropping it on, right on top. On top, so that all the other ingredients go underneath. Again, um, we're not mixing them, but and if we want, like at this stage, we can add a lot more water if you feel like our 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 rice is not soft enough. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like really well done cooked. Like in that okay. stage, it needs to be a little harder. But if you feel like it's very hard, if you feel like you know, if I'm going to see it, it's going to be uh, not going to be very well cooked. So we can always add water to it. The 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 best hack would be is uh, not to add much water so that you cannot you won't be able to take it out then mm -hmm. it just be into mashed you know rice right but you can uh, add up water if you feel like you can, you should then that would be a better so advice. so our our pot now the rice is just right on top and the water is right at the top so yeah is we a, probably need a lot more more uh, water, more water okay. yeah, to cover it as i said in the beginning that you know yes the rice needs to be covered. So okay, so we're going to add some water yeah, to that. Yeah. Um, one of our guests said she just learned that plov equals pilaf in English. It, yeah. in, she said she was wondering because her exchange student from Tashkent, Uzbekistan, used to make something like this. Yeah, so as I said, it goes by various names. It goes plov, plov, yeah. uh, pilaf, it goes... And pilaf, yeah. And pilaf. Like yeah. it, the, the names are just, uh, I mean, just a matter of naming, but uh, again, and, and they, they, they recipes would change. Just in Uzbekistan, like, mm -hmm. there could be, a, like, there are dozens of recipes to make plov. Mm -hmm. And in Tajikistan as well, like you can have like so many different mm -hmm. recipes. And, and again, uh, the naming is, is uh, like varies, but very much similar. Like mm -hmm. you can get the same size, like what you make is the same dish you're talking about. So what I'm seeing now though, is that the, the rice, I can still kind of see the rice under the water, but the water is covering it. It's covering Definitely it. Covering it's it. covering it. And uh, the reason for it to cover it, because we might, we want to make sure that the rice does get, get cooked. cooked. Yeah, yeah, so we don't want it like all solid there, you know, mm -hmm. to the remains of it to be solid. So yeah, so we do add, and then we uh, we probably need to turn off the this. Turn it off, yeah. Because yeah. I think it's this one is done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
um, um so this one and we will add again the raisins we can add them at this stage or we can add them uh when we are going to set it okay like, you know when it's we've got about 10 minutes so, so probably okay we can add it at this stage okay that's, that's just fine again it's uh Add the raisins. So you're just kind of sprinkling them around. Yeah, you can sprinkle okay. again, not not like not being picky about that. Again, you can add it even underneath the rice for like okay. as long as they're there. It's okay. just not <laughs> sure. Yes. So yeah, we can increase the water, like the heat a little bit higher, so that it does get boil like everywhere the idea is to have it uh so that it, you just get those boil like every part of it is is, is boiling okay you know that it's going it's not actually not soaking it in there mm -hmm. so that then it would just not turn up not to be good because mm -hmm. you know it just stays in there so sure. we can always reduce increasing decrease the, the, the heat all the time again as a we can we can just look at it and see how how it's playing and stuff mm -hmm. But once you again you make it over and over, you know, once you You get a feeling like, yeah, for you, it. You get it you certainly get a feeling for it and then you can change things, you can adjust them, you can add something, you can remove something. You can probably make it with a I don't know, with a with a with fish if you want to. <laughs> just anything, you know. Sure, you can just be sure. very creative about it. You said traditionally it's made with lamb though. Yeah, it does it is. It is made with lamb, a lot with lamb. Mm -hmm. And with the fat, with the lamb fat mm -hmm. as well. Like it's added to it. And it does become like very heavy, but and and uh, beef as well. Like mm -hmm. for, it's probably fifty to fifty. It's okay. Again, but yeah, a lot with beef and lamb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can try to put that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. On our. So we'll uh, put it over here. Yes. So that we and show how it turns out to be after roughly an hour, because yeah. that needs to be boiled again, and then I'll just reduce to a little bit. Also, what it doesn't evaporate like. Yeah. So yeah, this is how if we can show is it uh, here we'll yeah, we'll just hold it over. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you would have the rice. This is what we're gonna see once all of that water yeah. boils down. So when you swim it like you collect basically make it in, um, in, the, in the middle. A mound, yeah, kind of mouth. a mound in yeah, the middle. Yeah. yeah. In the middle. Uh somehow, yeah. So and the way you serve it, you basically take out the the rice part of it. Mm -hmm. You see, it goes under. And talking of the raisins, you see, I marked oh, that yeah. in the middle. Yeah, they you were see? down there in the middle, right? Yeah. So we can take them and just spread them all over if we want to. So that okay. everyone. And just another thing, like um, it's a, it's a traditional food. And a lot of people, I mean, you can certainly eat it with the, with the, with the spoon, but people do uh, eat it as it happens, you know, in the, in the East, you know, we eat it with, with their hands, hands. Yeah, yeah, sure. which is quite normal because right. like, of course you wash your hands and then, you know, you just, right. they're just natural utensils, you know. <laughs> Got it. And, you know, I mean, a lot of these cultures were very nomadic 150, 200 years ago or whenever this was created so you know utensils weren't really a thing they just right. had to use what they had on hand literally <laughs> that's that's correct that makes sense yeah so and then the uh ah, okay see? so yeah. this goes on top of it uh the the um the cumin is really smelling strong i can smell that and the garlic yeah, yeah. So that one piece of garlic just yeah. so good. <laughs> so as you see, this one doesn't have a lot of carrots, but it's again, it's up to you. People prefer it with a lot of carrot, mm -hmm. you know, as I said, traditionally. So again, you can, you can add, you can reduce, but like if you are in Tajikistan or Uzbekistan, you would most probably get it with a lot of carrot mm -hmm. that would be served on top of it, you know, like that. And uh, yeah, so I know like one recipe of Tashkent, um, Tashkent Palov in Uzbekistan is 
cooked only with yellow carrots. Okay. They don't take this orange, uh, orange <laughs> type of carrots. You know, it's always, it's always yellow. yellow. It's okay. It's always yellow carrots, and you do have them available on the market, like locally. You would have them in the mm -hmm. markets all the time available. Of course, there's considering there's yeah, and this is the garlic that it would go on top. Right on top. Yeah, okay. ours got a little. <laughs> Fill lost apart some a part bit. Yeah, yeah. of it, which is okay. <laughs> yeah, we can have it here. So, right, you can. So yeah, we can see the um, the raisins are with mixed with the, with mm -hmm. the rice, and uh, the the garlic goes on top, and then uh, the you can see the chickpeas. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you can see the chickpeas, they are. Um, they are just, uh, you know, there again, uh, and the, the meat goes on top. Again, you can have the meat, you can cook it big and then cut it into uh, into pieces and then one side of it, you mm -hmm. know, then cut it. Or you can just have it cut beforehand as we did and then um, and then have it, you know, sort of like this. Sure. Okay. So this would be a little bit better view of what the dish looks like. You can see that big head of garlic up top there and also our tomato and onion salad really simple salad to go with yeah 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 so it would go people would you can eat the salad from there or you can just put it on here mm -hmm. as i said like it, you they serve in big uh, in big plates like this mm -hmm. so and then everybody as I said, just takes everyone just yeah. takes whatever they feel like or you can just serve them personally like you can get them in the restaurant okay. people would just you know have it have it served for yourself like for one person right. one portion for mm -hmm. one person but this is how more or less it would look like <laughs> beautiful well let's finish up with this one yeah. so folks know what they're going to do here at the end rice is getting cooked and you can you can mix the top part of it all the time so that you know the rice kind of gets cooked evenly so mm -hmm. that you don't leave for example if this if i don't mix it say this part would not be cooked right sure so you are quite free to mix the top part of it not mix all of it again people mix all of it, move it well. around yeah, yeah move it around like the whole thing if you feel like no i want to mix all of it okay go ahead there's even a recipe like that that people would cook it in that way okay great so once we get that to where uh we think it looks good that's when we would go ahead and cover. yeah so basically the water would just needs to get absorbed like you can see that there's no water there mm -hmm. and then um and, and then you just collect it you know in the in the middle mm -hmm. and then reduce the heat to the lowest possible mm -hmm. and then uh and then leave it for another four to five minutes 40 to 45 even 30. some people go with 30 minutes i personally go with four to five minutes Okay. This is how I feel like, you know, yeah. And you do make sure that the water gets absorbed because if it doesn't, again, you might not, you might get that sticky rice. Right. Know, yeah, right. it does, it needs to get absorbed like properly. So right. You get it so done. we're not quite there yet. We're not. It's just, again, we would collect it this way, like that, yeah. you know, like in the middle. You can see the raisins. Yeah. Yeah. You so see. you're kind of mounding it up in yeah, the middle you're there. Yeah, you but you can see like there's still... Still Again, yeah. another hand, you can always check the, the device, like you can press it, like you know, uh -huh. it's, it's quite hard now, so we would spread it, and there is another, if you see that, for example, it's not boiling here, you might take, you might take a spoon, like the other, mm -hmm. <laughs> you go up Oh, now. create those steam yeah, holes. Create steam yeah. holes, so that it does get the steam everywhere, evenly, mm -hmm. you know, across the, the pot, right. and then, and I check. If you see that you still have a lot of water there, but your rice is kind of cooked, like pre-cooked, like it's it's kind of ready to mandate, you can increase the the heat so that the water gets uh, you a little know, faster, central, yeah, a little yeah. faster, and then you, you always have control over it. <laughs> Cindy says they're having uh, dinner tonight at our house and Doug's house since we know Doug is cooking too. Oh. Doug says this looks amazing. He's cooking in the Instant Pot with extra carrots, and it smells amazing, smells awesome. Okay. So okay. thanks for teaching well, him you're welcome, and guiding you're welcome. us. I'm yeah. glad, like, I hope you will like it. And uh, I'm glad, like, I had this opportunity to share to share something from my culture. Because, right. 
Yeah, I come from Tajikistan, just a little bit probably rapid. Tajikistan is located in Central Asia, it was part of the Soviet Union, but now it's an independent country since the 90s. I personally come from the remotest part of Tajikistan, it's the Pamir region. It's up in the mountains and we have our distinct language, we have our distinct culture, traditions, which kind of, um, which kind of a little bit distinct from the rest of Tajikistan in terms of like we have our own language and stuff, so which was they are preserved for the centuries and centuries. Um, yeah, no, this is this is wonderful, and and yeah, I'm sorry that you can't um, be here or at Doug's house to smell how wonderful it all smells. Um, you know, we we love to do this um, on our monthly show here from from my kitchen. We also have traditionally over the last few years managed to find a way to do um, an in person World Kitchen about once a year we'll see if we can make that happen again this summer at some point or early fall if we can manage that but uh we'll let you know if that happens and maybe you guys can come out and actually be in our audience when we do it in person at the wpsu studios mm -hmm. so thanks for joining us next month in april i believe it's the 28th if that's a sunday of april um, will be World Kitchen UAE and um, the Humphrey Fellow from Abu Dhabi will be here cooking a traditional dish from the UAE. So we're still waiting for our water to kind of boil away, but then we will uh, mound it up in the middle. Okay. Like it doesn't need to be properly cooked at this stage. You need right, because it's going to steam firmness. for yeah. 45 minutes. Yeah. Right. So it does have to, it does need to have that firmness to itself so that, you know, once as you said, it gets to so that, you know. Yeah. And then once, once that happens, because I think we're going to have to head out, once that happens, we'll mound it up in the middle, we'll put the lid on, yeah, and we'll lid. reduce the heat. We'll to... reduce the heat and uh, to to the lowest as inside the very the lowest lowest, lowest yeah. possible on your wood depending on your right yeah so this is how we like the, the we can even with a little bit of water we can still uh we can we can sim it but that we need the the property for the one first part to, to keep the, the heat a little bit hard mm. so that you know that the water does get does, does get, get it yeah, yeah. Okay, if yeah. we want to but right. i mean the idea is to have it Right. Well, maybe while that's uh, doing that, let's come back over here. Put on a on a dish here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Yeah, the rice is cooked all the way through. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I hope you all have an opportunity to um, make this at home. If you didn't cook along with us today, try it again sometime um, when you have the time. This video will be up on our website by the end of next week so that you can go back and watch it again as you're cooking if you'd like to do that. And we, thanks very much for joining us, and we will see you in April. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Videos like this are made possible by support from viewers like you. If you enjoyed this video, visit WPSU.org to become a member today and help us create more content like this.